Linebacker, I barely know her. <laughs> God, I really need to get out of quarantine. Grassy Posse Packer Nation. Welcome to an episode of Packcast, the podcast where you don't have a Packers fan, but it sure does help. I'm your host, Tim Grassy. And today, as promised, as promised, calm down. We're going to take a look at five linebacker prospects that the Packers could target on day dose. That's two for our Spanish speaking friends. But before we get into that, I just want to give you a breakdown of what this week is going to look like because it's draft week, baby. It's draft week week. So here's what it's going to look like. Today, obviously, we're going to have the linebacker episode. Also hoping to get out the episode of Coach. I got to do a lot of editing. I might not be able to, but we're going to try. Tomorrow, we're going to take a look at the top five most likely players that the Packers will select at 30, as well as a reaction video. Wednesday, we'll have the final Packers seven-round mock draft, as well as a live stream. Wednesday night, the night before the draft, it will be a night of too many mock drafts. I'll be here. You hopefully will be there. We'll sit here and we'll mock until the cow comes home. No, seriously, has anyone seen the cow? We're worried. Please inform the authorities if you have. Then on Thursday, we'll have a final mock draft, which will be the first round mock draft. Then we'll have a, of course, we'll be live streaming for the first night of the draft followed by player breakdowns from our selection on Thursday. Then on Friday, we'll be streaming the second night of the draft, as well as all of the player breakdown videos. And then on Saturday, we'll have uh, probably six player videos, considering we have six draft picks that day. So let's get into what we're doing today. Let's look at linebackers. So when I compiled this list, uh, this is just five guys that kind of seem to me that not be so much of a reach if we were to go there on day two. Now, I will tell you that I didn't look at every single linebacker. A lot of them obviously were edge rushers or outside linebackers. I was primarily focusing on either inside linebackers or guys who could make the transition over to inside linebacker, and I think that they could do it well. So with that being said, let me shut the hell up. Number one, we got Zach Bound, the outside linebacker from Wisconsin. And you're like, what time? What you just you just said you're looking at inside linebackers. Yeah, I think you can make the transition, guys. 6'2, 238 pounds, ran a 46540. He would obviously have to move inside as primarily his main function was being an edge rusher. Uh the guy, you know what? In 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 some way, he reminds me of Ty Summers a little bit, in that his motor is so ridiculously off the chart. I love the way this guy is a three-down back, which is obviously what the Packers need and are looking for. Um and, that, and that's one of those things that I, I constantly look in players, especially on the defense, is that can they be guys that are just, like, constantly going? There are a few guys that are watching here that were gassed, like, in the second half, and that that's not what I want. Uh, in 2019, I had 52 solo tackles, 19 and a half of them for a loss, 12 and a half sacks, one interception, one touchdown, which was a pick six, uh, and two passes defended. The guy, if you want to see any highlights and don't want to bother looking at actual game tape, you could just check those out. The guy hits like a damn freight train. He has great burst. Now, my concerns are two things. One, he had a diluted urine sample at the combine. He blamed it on drinking too much water. I don't I don't know what that means, but I mean, that might raise some red flags that the Packers might be like, mm, maybe not. And two, he's obviously not a true inside linebacker. Well, I think the guy is a dynamic playmaker. Um, the big thing for me was that he he could he could drop back into coverage. That wasn't bad. His coverage skills weren't terrible. Um, but again, when you're looking at the outside linebackers and potentially moving them inside, you don't want to draft a guy, put him out of position, and then because of that, he plays significantly worse. So for example, lots of people have asked me, are we going to move Rashawn Gary to the inside, right? Or will we move Clay Matthews to the inside? Clay Matthews was serviceable on the inside, absolutely. But the problem was, is that that's not where his strengths were. And it's the same exact thing with Rashawn Gary. Moving a guy who's an, an edge rusher or that's where his talents are best utilized, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. I think Bound could make the transition into an inside linebacker, but that is one of those concerns. And so because of that, you know, people who were saying, let's pick him on day one, that's why I'd have a little bit of a reservation and may go for day two and round two. Then the second guy, we got Jordan Brooks, the inside linebacker from Texas Tech at six foot, 240 pounds, ran a 4.5440. He had a shoulder injury this season. Um, this guy reminded me a little bit too much of Blake Martinez uh, in that he, he's a great tackler in 2019 
only played 11 games because I told you he was out with an injury. Had 66 total tackles, 20 of them for a loss, and two fumble recoveries. Um, But he is definitely not a coverage guy. So, for example, the other guys that we've looked at, so Patrick Queen and Kenneth Murray. Kenneth Murray is a thumper, right? He's the guy who goes in, makes the tackle behind the line, not really going to test him in coverage a whole lot, while Queen is kind of the opposite in which he's more of a coverage guy. Brooks, to me, obviously is more reminiscent of Kenneth Murray. I don't think he's as good as Kenneth Murray, though, and obviously this is why he's a day two guy. Um, I, I gotta be honest, what I saw of Jordan Brooks, I wasn't entirely impressed, not as much I as I was with some other guys on this list. So for me, while he obviously plays inside linebacker and it wouldn't have to we wouldn't have to transition him, um, I really wasn't that impressed. Then you had number three, you got Anthony Jennings from Alabama, 6'2", 256 pounds. He's another one, outside linebacker, who is kind of doing dual, dual roles. He could do outside linebacker. You play inside linebacker. But he would obviously you know, be moved to the inside since we have a plethora of outside linebackers. 2019, played 13 games, 45 solo tackles, 12 and a half for a loss, eight sacks, one interception, and five passes defended. Um, those passes defended... All of them basically are right at the line in which he's rushing after the quarterback, reaching up and swatting them down. He's really good at swatting the ball. Um, And most of his highlights are as an edge rusher. Again, not a coverage guy, not one who has really demonstrated that we could put him back there and feel relatively confident in the middle of the field. But again, if we wanted someone who could be that dual threat, he could do delayed blitzes or obviously he could be in sub packages. You know, I think he could be beneficial there again. But my concern is that, you know, since he's not a true inside linebacker, what we really want to utilize him for, I don't know if he's going to be able to do it. Then number four, you got a guy who I picked for the Packers seven round mock draft, and that is Troy Dye, the inside linebacker from Oregon, uh, 6'3", 231 pounds, which by the way, if you're paying attention to why I'm listing weights, uh, he needs to put on some weight. That's one of the big problems, but uh, I like his coverage ability a lot. A lot of people were talking about when I was reading some summaries about him before I started getting into the tape, They were saying that like, oh, like, you know, his tackle numbers are really good. But I honestly was like, okay, yeah, that's fine. I actually liked his coverage ability. Uh, And he could also tackle. He has great pursuit, played 13 games, had 52 solo tackles, nine and a half for a loss, two and a half sacks, two interceptions, and four passes defended. He had an interception every single year he played at Oregon. I absolutely like this. I, I love this guy for a third round pick. I think that he'd provide great value for the Packers in which he could do both roles. So for me, he actually edges out some of these guys on this list because I've seen him in coverage and he's not that bad. Um, and and I, I, you know, I, maybe this is just me being greedy, but like I, I've kind of put coverage kind of over run stopping ability at this point just because of how many times we've been burnt over the middle over the years and we never really had a true coverage uh, middle linebacker, inside linebacker. And so that being said, we do absolutely need run stopping ability because look at the NFC championship game. And I think he could provide that as well. Um, He just provides a little bit of a bonus with coverage. Then number five, the final guy, you got Malik Harrison, the inside linebacker from Ohio State at 6'3", 247 pounds, ran a 4'6", 640. In 2019, had 49 solo tackles, 16 and a half for a loss, three and a half sacks, four passes defended, and two fumble recoveries. He's another guy who's pretty damn good in coverage. He's a huge hitter. Um, he's a great delayed blitzer, and he's a damn good run defender. Malik Harrison, they, a lot of the, the knacks against him are him as a rusher. And him as an edge guy is that he's sometimes getting stonewalled by tackles and it's, you know, he's not able to get to the QB. But if we utilized Malik Harrison, he's another one that I really, really like. And I would totally go for him in the third round. I think if we put him on the inside and occasionally had him go after the quarterback, but mostly there to just cover the middle of the field. Yeah, I I would totally be good with that. So... Based off these rankings, I th- there's a part of me that doesn't think that Zach Bound is going to be there by the time we pick at 62, which makes me think either one, we're going to pick him at 30, which I don't know how comfortable I'd be with that, or we'd trade back into the second round and get him early, which I'm like, meh about. But the other two guys that I would love in the third round is Troy Dye or Malik Harrison. I think that both of those guys could add some much-needed talent to the middle of the field and potentially fill a hole. Obviously, we have Christian Kirksey, which who knows what we have in him yet. You know, the biggest thing with Kirksey is just staying on the field. So I think we can obviously get some depth here in the early rounds, which is where we need to get an inside linebacker, please. 
just please just give me just give me one but let me know what you think down in the comments below you can always find me at tomgrassycomedy.com or at tomgrassycomedy on all social media you see down below check out podcasts on soundcloud itunes google play music spotify and of course youtube and a big shout and thank you to all the patreon members or at patreon.com slash tomgrassycomedy but thank you so much for watching i'm tom grassy and as always go pack go 